Hello everybody and welcome again to another of our late Zoom interviews. Um, today we're really lucky to have a conversation with someone um, who has been really thinking deeply about some of the work they're doing with their online learning and that's Francesca Ullert from Kerry Baptist Grammar. Good morning Francesca, how are you? Good morning, really well Ernest, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I kind of feel like I'm on uh, ABC News at the moment because this is where I've got I'm my there. cue cards and shuffle yeah. them in order. Welcome to you, Ernest. Exactly. Um, so you sort of reached out a little to um, to Vape when we've been, I guess, asking about um, people's thoughts around online learning. Um, and Kerry, I know, was one of the first schools to sort of trial things online, um, thrust into the headlines. So what, just generally, like, what has that experience of teaching online been like for you? I think thrust is definitely the correct verb choice. <laughs> um, look, I think I want to preface everything that I share uh, with the really frank admission that I'm not an expert in online learning. I'm just an English teacher that was thrust, as you say, into that online um, or the remote learning environment. And to be honest, I found online learning to be a multi-headed beast so far. Some of those heads are really fantastic and positive in ways that I didn't anticipate or expect. Um, and some of them are genuine challenges. Um, so for example, I found the opportunity to rethink pedagogy, to encourage students to really be independent. We talk about that so much, but time to test that out for real now. Um, and to, um, I suppose, challenge modes of delivery or expand modes of delivery. They've been really great opportunities. But of course, there have been frustrations with technological glitches or um, that lack of immediacy, that face-to-face -face and relational, um, I suppose, element that a lot of teachers crave or trade in, um, that they've been, they've been challenging. Absolutely. And I think, you know, personally, you know, I think I've started every job application with the quote from Coma about, you know, relationships being foundational to learning. So this whole idea of how you translate that online is really interesting. Mm. Um, so I guess that sort of then begs the question of how you actually do engage students. What are some of the things that you found through that process of trial and error that have best engaged students? Well, following on from what we were just talking about, I think if you can or you have access to being able to engage students in real time, whether that is through video conferencing like we're doing right now, or even things like interactive quizzes and the like, that's super powerful, I found. Um, the thing that uh, I realised and my colleagues realised quite quickly uh, was a big no-no was just delivering big slabs of um, information, be that written or otherwise, that really encourage students to be passive and just sort of absorb the information. Um, that They found that equal parts overwhelming and disengaging. So I think any way that we can as teachers to, to break things up into digestible bite size and engaging chunks um, is going to be super beneficial for both students and for ourselves. Um, in terms of engaging students as well, um, I really think that it's important that we ask students or develop some activities that encourage students to take a break from screen time whilst still engaging with English work. Um, so for example, I know some of my colleagues have been asking students to go away on A4 paper or an A3 paper and draw mind maps, for example, about texts and photograph them or you know, film themselves doing some reenacting something outside, getting pets involved or what have you. Um, just so that we can create some diversity because it can feel really static and stagnant sitting at a computer screen. I've even found that in the past three weeks that I've been working. I think breaks from screen time are really, really important. Absolutely. Is your school working sort of to a standard timetable or is it a little bit more, I think the, the buzzword is asynchronous, which is the sort of mode that you've been using? Um, it's uh, still, so we've got two sections at Kerry, two, two different schools that um, make up the traditional secondary school, the middle school from year seven to nine and then from year 10 to 12, um, that's the senior school. In the senior school, um, we've been encouraging students to work more or less from their timetable. However, we're only really communicating with students during that period that we would have a double block with them when teachers are reaching out and actively, I suppose, engaging, whether that's by conferencing or otherwise their classes. Um, and then for the rest of that day, students are encouraged to just focus on their English work, say when they usually have English, but 
there's no obligation to be sitting um, at your computer and talking to your teacher during that time. Uh, we, the logic behind that, I suppose, was that we thought it would be quite overwhelming and quite um, constricting to have students following a minute to minute timetable in an environment that's not at all like school where you've got siblings and probably entire families in the house all at once. Um, so yeah, we've, we've locked in those doubles um, and they're true to form to the timetable. Um, but the other periods around that, the other lessons are more flexible. Um, and on that note, uh, a lot of my colleagues and I owe a huge debt to the collegiality, not just from Kerry, but from other schools and even, you know, the SAGE teachers from China and Italy. I've been getting lots of information from them as well. Um, the strong message seems to be that you can't just transpose all of your content online in the quantity and the rigor and the depth that you would teach in a classroom normally you've scaled by that so the time that you're doing is just trying to reflect that yeah and i think it's it's a really interesting opportunity i guess to go um, back to what you were saying at the beginning of our conversation about i guess the way that um there are both opportunities and challenges i guess to use a really cliched sort of phrase but um, you know, this idea actually reflect on what is the core idea of a lesson or a unit that we actually want students to pick up and sort of pairing things right back to that. Precisely. And being really transparent with the students as well, saying this is the big idea, this is the core question or the focus of what we're trying to do this week or this unit even, um, and putting that on the table so everybody knows exactly where we're heading and what our, what our goal is. Um, I think that can provide clarity. And like you said, if you have the time and the mental space or um, to to view the positives in the situation I think it really it really can be um, so yes excitement and trepidation all bundled mm -hmm. up together there yes and I think you know um, I guess maybe my, my next sort of question was going to be around how your students have been responding because I think also acknowledging that that we and young people are in very strange times at the moment uh, and that people are going to have sort of patchy and, and ever-changing responses to that. So how have you found them engaging with um, the process of online or remote learning? Honestly and overwhelmingly, the students have been really adaptive and really positive in their approach. Um, I feel really thankful for the uh, their ability to, to get on board um, and to, I suppose, just start swimming mm. um of course of course there are students with many different needs and some have really flourished given the independence you know that university style um learning but then there are other students that are going to find organization and motivation um genuine genuine obstacles um and teachers would be aware of who those students are in their classes um and that's a tricky thing to, to navigate, I suppose, touching in, having a finger on the pulse there is really important. We can't say that this is going to be fantastic for all learners right away. And there are obstacles beyond just learning needs there as well in terms of resourcing um, and dynamics of the new environments that the students are learning in. So uh, I think we have to acknowledge that that is, that is a really, really complex sort of nexus of of work there. Um, I think one thing that, that I've found and my colleagues have found in the last three weeks has been that students have really craved um, some form of consistency from that, that at home learning experience, whether that's set times, say um, meeting with home groups or mentor groups at a particular time during the day just to say hello and to feel that sense of community um, and to make sure that communication both between subject teachers of the same area, say all year nine English teachers, um, is consistent so that students don't feel that they're having some kind of um, disparity between, between themselves and their peers in another class. Uh, that's been quite important in making sure that students don't feel overwhelmed or confused as well. So for example, at Kerry, we defaulted um, in the past few weeks to just having um, one central weekly message that would go out from year nine English say uh, and it would outline the you know the core um, goals or tasks that we'd like students to do for that week and then the class teachers acted more as tutors to sort of support and go in and do some of that differentiation for the students that might be struggling in a new environment and um, 
we found that that worked quite well for the last two weeks, but who knows what the future holds yeah. in terms of the models. Well, thankfully, teachers are nothing if not adaptable um, to ever-changing circumstances. But I think it's a really interesting reflection as well on how we work collegially um, in terms of managing workload as well. Obviously, um, you know, it's just such an, an enormous task that almost doesn't bear thinking about to adapt um, our our profession in such a profound way in such a short space of time and I think you know you've spoken there about some of the ways that you've worked with your colleagues to do that and to manage that process which I think is really important for uh, teachers and educators to think about going forward um, if you know we're in this space for a while as well. Absolutely Ernest and to be very frank the will of themselves into this new online environment has been it's been a highlight mm. to be part of such a collegial um, profession in terms of the reaction of colleagues and staff broadly being truly the highlight of my past few weeks the willingness of people to just throw themselves into that new learning environment to say I don't know how to record audio on a PowerPoint but I'm going to learn. Do you want to jump on board with me and vice versa and the sharing, which is why um, I was more than happy to, to share whatever tips I've learnt um, with you now, because really, I mean, we are in it together. We've got the same goal, don't we? Which is really to, to guide the students through this. Thank you so much for your time today. I think it's been so valuable to hear your reflection on I guess that pedagogical element because I think um, you know we're all being inundated in our email inboxes with how, this is how you use this program and that program which we can all learn um, with some trial and error you know using YouTube videos and whatnot but it's actually thinking about that learning process and that reflection that's been so valuable to hear from you today. Um, we really really appreciate your time in what are supposed to be holidays nominally um, and yeah thank you so much for your reflection we look forward to continuing to hear how this goes for as long as this journey unfolds the pleasure is all mine take care Ernest thank you so much bye-bye